YouTube analytics can be scary no matter if you're a seasoned veteran or brand new to YouTube, but in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with YouTube analytics and which ones you should look at first. Hey Tube Buddies, I'm Shelly Nathan, the video manager and product expert here at TubeBuddy. Raise your hand if you've ever looked at a report and just went, nope, and clicked out. I have been there myself. So I understand, especially if you're new, how scary it can and overwhelming it can seem when you're starting to look at metrics and data and knowing how do I use this for my channel. So today we are going to take you through a quick journey and overview on some of the easiest metrics that you can look at so that you can use them to help inform decisions about your channel going forward. So let's get started. Audience retention information can be found underneath the analytics of any specific video. And a couple of key metrics to look at here is going to be average view duration and average percentage viewed. These are two important and different metrics, so let's talk about that. A really good goal is to still have 50% of your audience watching by the time you've reached the end of your video. I know that may seem low, but actually it's pretty darn good if you can get your 50% average view duration to somewhere within the last 25% of your video. A few things can make it so that people are not watching your video all the way to the end. If you're someone who's actually had a 15 or 20 second end plate where you have all of your social medias or other videos popping up, but you're no longer on screen, that can actually make people click away, driving them away from finishing the video so that they won't get to those end screens. Also, if you're into the tutorial or educational type of content and you actually have a listicle type of video where you say something like, and the last item is, or that's how easy it was, that is a really good indicator to people that the video is over and all the information that they want has already been delivered. That's when people will click off. So the trick is to make sure that people don't know that the video is ending or to leave them wanting more by sending them to another video or something that is related. If you find that you have a dramatic drop in the very beginning, maybe you have a branded intro that you really should ditch because people aren't watching it. Think about when you watched a show on Netflix the very first time you may have watched the intro, but every single time after that, if there was a skip intro button available, you probably pushed it because you wanted to get to the video. One of the things that we see a lot where you're gonna lose a lot of people in the beginning is if you have a really rambly intro where it's something like, hey everyone, sorry I haven't uploaded, I just have to tell you this story about what happened and then my dog and then all of these things. People aren't listening, especially if it's a tutorial or they just wanna learn something. They're just gonna keep fast forwarding if they're nice or they're gonna exit out if they're a regular type of viewer. You'll also see a dramatic drop if you have done some sort of clickbait where you can obviously tell that the video has nothing to do at all with what was promised in the thumbnail. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're promising in the title and the thumbnail, people are going to see that you're going to deliver on that promise right away. So if you're a cooking channel, you may start with the finished product and then you say, this is how we're going to make it. By showing that you are going to deliver on what the end thing is, people will be more willing to watch the process leading up to the thing that they want to actually accomplish or do. One of the things I love about TubeBuddy so much is its simplistic way of showing you analytics and getting you to where you want to go. So if you're on the video main page, you can actually drop down the little carrot menu and then use the quick links area and then go to the report that is exactly what you're looking for. So for instance, if I wanna see how many subscribers I gained from a certain video like the content upload checklist, I can actually drop down from the menu and hit subscribers and then it will take me to that specific report and give me the answer. Another great place to see video analytics as well, you can see video analytics on our mobile app and it's going to give you information such as the like to dislikes and as well as how many comments are on a video and it's a great snapshot as well as views. So you can see how each video is doing as you're on your phone inside of the mobile app. Okay, next up we have to talk about CTR or this stands for click-through rate. There are a lot of misconceptions about click-through rate, so let's go ahead and break it down. Click-through rate is a metric that is going to take into account how many impressions or times someone has seen that thumbnail 
as well as how many views the video got. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Now, if you have a percentage of click-through rate that is really, really high, but you have very low impressions, that may not be a true measurement of how well your thumbnail is doing. And you'll also see that the more impressions that your thumbnail has, usually the lower the click rate will be. Another thing to keep in mind is that an impression is not always an impression based on where you see the thumbnail. Now, a few places where if you were to come across a thumbnail, it would count as an impression would be if you were searching on youtube.com, of course, and then seeing in a playlist or going through recommended, or it was showing up in suggested, or perhaps you even saw it in a watch later playlist or in your home subscription feed. Now, a few places where CTR impressions will not count are going to be additional places such as inside of the YouTube Kids app, inside of an embedded video in an external website or sent out in that email blast if you're coming out from a newsletter. So there are certain instances where those impressions will not count. So you do need to be mindful of that when you're thinking about the overall impression landscape. Now we're gonna give our brains a second here to recover from the mush of all of this metric number. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on our comment of the day. So thank you so much for leaving comments on our videos or community posts. These have been so fun to share with y'all. And so if you wanna be featured in a video in the future, then make sure you comment on our community posts or videos for a chance to be on screen. Now, while there are certainly a lot of metrics that we can share and go over, we wanted to give you this brief overview so you feel more comfortable knowing which ones to look at first and how you might be able to interpret that data to make changes for your videos. If you want a more advanced tutorial or video in covering these topics, then make sure you comment it down below so we know that you wanna see that from us. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Two Buddies. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.